Yeah, hello again, and welcome back to another Rain World lore video. This was the first video voted for by my Patreon, and uh, that should tell you something about my video schedule. So if you want to say in which videos get made two months later, you can support me there, and a poll is going to be coming out right after this. This one is going to be a full read-through of all the pearls, with discussion on those aspects of the pearls that are significantly more funky than the others. So bundle up and get ready to listen to Iterator Doss read out your slimy gastric juice coated lore pearls. Actually, wait, hold on. Uh, let me make this more believable for you. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> now I am become PNG tuber, destroyer of recommendation feeds. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is why the video took so long. Cope? Thanks to Shromp, Splash Paws, and Raptor Day for their hard work on turning this design into a reality. This is a bit experimental, so tell me if you actually like this funky little guy, because currently the plan is that I'm going to use him for like every single Rain World lore video that's scripted and highly edited like this in the future. But if some of y'all out there prefer the old thing and want that to stay, then uh, just yell at me in the comments, and if you're the majority, I'll probably do that. Anyway, cool. Let's 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 get a move on. Starting off our reading is the light blue pearl found in outskirts. Ahem. <clears throat> its entire memory is filled with a mantra repeated five thousand and sixty-one times, and then a termination verse. It was worn like an amulet probably together with many identical others forming a pattern on some garment. The repeating mantra is important because it symbolizes the cyclical nature of life and death, and the termination verse is a symbol for ascension above and beyond it. I don't know how familiar you are with the nature of life and death, but I imagine, like all living creatures, you have some intuitive knowledge? Then you know death isn't the end. Birth and death are connected to each other like a ring. Or some say a spiral. Some say a spiral that, in turn, forms a ring. Some ramble in agonizing longevity. But this basis is agreed upon, like sleep, like death. You wake up again, whether you want it or not. This is true for all living things, but some actually break the cycle. That doesn't apply to you or me, though. You are too entangled in your animal struggles, and for me, not breaking that cycle is an integral part of the design. Our mantras keep repeating. This pearl is basically Moon debriefing us on the concept of the Great Cycle, and quite well, I might add, well enough that I don't even really feel the need to elaborate. This pearl is essentially just an ancient poem, and we're in English class getting a lecture on it. The other pearls should have more detailed descriptions later. Anyway, next up, Blue Pearl in Industrial Complex. It's a production record of a mask factory, for what seems to be its last time in service. Have you seen a bone mask? Likely not. They are all gone with their owners. In ancient times, the masks were actually about showing spiritual persuasion, covering the face as a way to symbolically abate the self. Then, of course, that was quite subverted as excessively ornate and lavish masks became an expression of identity. Some public persons did have problems with narrow doorways. Originally, monks at a temple would make the masks using bone plaster, and when the production was automated, it would generally remain on the same site, so that the old stones could radiate the material with holiness, I suppose. This is from one such facility called Side House, which was here on Pebbles Grounds. In the Iterator projects, many old industrial religious sites like this were remodeled and incorporated. I think this one was made to provide pellets of holy ash to Pebbles, but knowing him, he probably hasn't used much of it. This pearl entirely discusses early ancient culture and focuses specifically on the religious and cultural side of things as well as their existence alongside the swift industrialization. The things they discuss, we already know, such as masks being worn as a symbol of identity, and that such heavily spiritual aspects of the society were phased out as time went on in favor of a more practical culture. This is discussed with the difference in the purpose of the masks, for one, uh, but also in the fact that the facility itself went through a complete renovation. Though the spiritual aspects did much still remain, as they were giving holy ash to their robot child, who likely didn't care very much about it. Next up, Turquoise Pearl and Garbage Wastes. This one is... authored by Five Pebbles, when he was young. There has been an attempt to scramble the data, but it's sloppily done, and most is still somewhat legible. 
It's written in internal language, or thoughts, so it is hard for me to translate, so you'd understand. It's a methodology for global ascension, of course. Quite good, although the peripherists or the slab mongers certainly wouldn't agree. Considering the 8th and the 26th Amendments to the Capricious Dogma, we are apparently supposed to take for granted that a meaning collector point, inversion, is the only way to approach what has later become referred to as noise milking, or occasionally rock swatting. I will argue my disagreement with this, not in regards to kind, but in regards to, could it say, volume? Actually, are you getting anything out of this? I suppose you found this in his waste department. I would be wary of going in there. On his first fit of corruption, he dumped a lot of infected material there, and if it has survived, it could easily eat a little creature like you. Not that it would be as dangerous as going into pebbles himself. Also, the pearls in the waste masses inevitably attract scavengers, which can be very dangerous if provoked. But you seem to have made it out of there. This is a pretty rich fucking pearl, if you couldn't tell, throwing around giant words like capricious dogma and noise milking and all that. But let's focus on the basics before getting to that giant stuff. First off, this pearl was written by a young five pebbles as essentially a new procedure for global ascension, another in a long line made by all iterators I'm presuming. Though it seems as if a few other factions, that being the peripherists and the slab mongers, whoever they are, don't like it all too much. Then it goes into a quote, interesting buzzwords here include capricious dogma, noise milking, and rock swatting. Presumably the capricious dogma is like a kind of ancient constitution. Another thing to add to the coming never ancient lore part two. The other two are just absolutely meaningless word salad, presumably meant to mean nothing. The rest of the pearl just talks about the lore behind garbage waste, though. Next up, Purple Pearl in Shoreline. It's about the local aquifer. Must be quite old from when Five Pebbles was in the planning phase. Water is the most important resource for our basic function. Most of our processing is outsourced to microbe strata, in which we need a flow of clean water or else slag builds up. Our processes cease and eventually we die. It is very painful. They used to say that an iterator drinks a river, but neither of us two have seen a natural river. So I suppose the analogy is lost on us, little creature. Originally, water supply was very important in placing iterators. Later, there would be a great equalizer. The fact that we breathe out as much vapor as we inhale water led to there being water available everywhere. And the latest few generations could be placed almost completely freely. Building pebbles so close to me was believed to be a risky choice, but the groundwater was finally deemed as sufficient. It was not a good decision, in hindsight. This pearl is pretty helpful because it specifically talks about water's importance in iterator functionality, specifically referencing the situation with moon and pebbles. Nothing too complicated here, essentially just saying that the constant rains led to a roundabout solution for the iterator placing issue, as the water cycle brought it all back down anyways. It also confirms the existence of a pain response for iterators. Wowee! Next up, magenta pearl in shoreline. It is the genome for a purposed organism, a small slug to clean the insides of pipes. Do you know what a purposed organism is? Actually, you're talking to one right now. Although, a small fraction of one. Nowadays, I am mostly just my puppet. The bulk of me is in these walls, but I am disconnected from those parts, to a degree where I am only vaguely aware of how bad their condition is. Most purposed organisms were considerably smaller than me, and most barely looked like organisms at all, more like tubes in metal boxes, where something went in one end and came out the other. There were, of course, those that were purposed for spectacle rather than industry. They enjoyed the privilege of glass boxes. When I came into this world, there was very little primal fauna left, so it's highly likely that you are the descendant of a purposed organism yourself. This pearl is interesting. I referenced it in the last Rain World video. Check that out after this one if you're interested. This one speaks about purposed organisms, essentially just the way that ancients industrialized. Instead of making refineries out of metal, to speak reductively, they just had a creature eat the ore and poop out the ingots. It also confirms that iterators reside mostly within their puppet, though the rest of them is also technically a purposed organism, essentially just making iterators very, very large flesh blobs coated in metal. Fucked up by now. Next up, Yellow Pearl and Looks to the Moon. Interesting, this one is written by me. It's about an iterator called Sliver of Straw. I don't remember when I wrote it. Do you know Sliver of Straw? She's quite legendary among us. Sliver of Straw is the only one to ever broadcast a specific signal that the big problem we're all working on has been solved, the triple affirmative. Affirmative that a solution has been found, affirmative that the solution is portable, and affirmative that a technical implementation is possible and generally applicable. She's also one of the few that has ever been confirmed as exhaustively incapacitated, or dead. 
we do not die easily. Sliver of straw sent this and the ensuing commotion was historically unparalleled, before or after I still remember it. But nothing happened, except that Sliver of Straw was apparently dead. When the dust settled, we were all still there blinking at each other. Everyone had a theory. Some said that she did have a solution, but that solution itself was somehow dangerous. These later became known as the Triangulators, who think that a solution should be inferred without being directly discovered. Some said that she never had a solution, she just died, and when the systems broke down, an erroneous signal was sent. One camp claimed that dying was the solution. Either way, after that, these different factions developed, as well as a huge forensic effort to recreate and simulate Sliver of Straw's last moments. Some of the simulations were wrapped in a simulation, wrapped in a simulation, in case something dangerous might happen. Nothing much has come from it. In my essay, I make the case that she should be allowed to rest in peace now. Wee woo, wee woo, do you hear that? It's the absolutely fucking monumental pearl alarm. Also, among us, this pearl is fucking gargantuan for the lore. Because it tells us about Sliver of Straw, who's honestly not that giant when it comes to strictly the gameplay, but it's... Maybe that I just write iterator stories as a notable portion of my job. Either way, this one speaks about Sliver of Straw, as well as the ensuing chaos behind her triple affirmative. It clarifies the definition of a triple affirmative, as well as telling us how iterator society functioned as a whole after the ancients left, by showing their reaction to a giant situation like this. They really are just super intelligent people that are collectively and constantly plugged into Discord. Next up, Dark Pink Pearl in Memory Crypts. Oh, this one is interesting. You must have found it in the Memory Crypts. It has some plain text, I can read it out to you. In this vessel is the living memories of 17 axes, 15 spoked wheel. Of the House of Braids, Count of Eight Living Blocks, Counselor of Sixteen, Grandmaster of the Twelfth Pillar of Community, High Commander of Opinion Group Winged Opinions, of Pure Braid Heritage, voted local champion in the speaking tournament of 1511.090. Mother, father, and spouse, spiritual explorer, and honorary member of the Congregation of Balanced Ambiguity, artist, warrior, and fashion legend. The 17 axes, 15 spoke to wheel, nobly decided to ascend at the beginning of 1514-008. After graciously donating all, all, earthly possessions to the local Idrater project, Unparalleled Innocence, and left these memories to be cherished by the carnal plane. The assorted memories in Qualia include watching dust suspended in a ray of sun, old age, eating a very tasty meal, young child, defeating an opponent in a debate contest, and being applauded by fellow team members late childhood slash early adulthood. And the list goes on. I'm sorry, little creature, I won't read all this. The list is 620 items long. This is another somewhat lore-important pearl. I mean, almost all of them are. They are called lore pearls. But this one covers the phenomenon of memory storage in ancient culture. Not memory as in computer memory, but literal memories in our brains stored inside a computer. Or in this case, a worm. To be viewed by our ancestors for all of time. There are a few things to consider in this, first of which being a potential based alert, being the presence of the phrase mother, father, and spouse. Does this mean that ancients produce asexually? Probably not, judging by this. Is 17 axes 15 spoked wheel a trans icon? I doubt it. So far it likely just means that an anxious have a different way of viewing gender than us in general. Besides that, the rest of this just states stuff that we already know, such as uh, disproving my iterator logs timeline, as well as name dropping unparalleled innocence. Also, this ancient was applauded as a fashion legend. I just found that wording funny. Next up is the, and I quote, ashy green pearl, cause can't just say olive green, found on top of five pebbles. We will not consider the current situation acceptable, although our community is blessed with an ever-shrinking population, and we can almost glimpse that glorious moment when the last of us has joined our most admired peers, we must still, at all times, maintain good relations with our iterator. The moral argument, five pebbles is our creation, and we have parental obligations towards him as an iterator. He is also a gift of charity from us to the world, unable to reach enlightenment by itself, being composed of mostly rock, gas, dull-witted bugs, and microbes, and towards which we thus have obligations. The practical argument. Despite you being family, I must beg forgiveness for the blunt vulgarity, but we are, for as long as we remain, dependent on five pebbles for water, nectar, energy, void fluid, and all other vital resources. By now, living on the surface is laughable. We are across the river, and have kicked out the boat. I therefore ask you to do anything in your might to stop the house, we both know which house, from further obstruction. They have less than 40 members on the council, but still tilt the spiritual discourse with our Iterator in a direction that most obviously displeases him, and is hardly high-held by anyone in the community either. We cannot risk this. 
and then there are polite farewells. N none of us really miss the times when the cities were populated. Imagine having skin parasites that also ask for advice and have opinions. I'm sorry, that was disrespectful. They were our parents, after all. This one is really interesting. Take a shot every time I've said that phrase, as it discusses the Iterator's opinions on the Ancients, and vice versa. Now, the relationship of creator to dependent is inherently a super neat part of most science fiction stories, especially those that focus on the sentience of the robots in question. This also points out the interesting cultural quirks in ancient schools of thought, with them listing out both arguments in terms of their morality and practicality. This pearl also warns me to point out that word, nectar. Now, it's highly likely that nectar is a sort of nutrient soup he says a sort of superfood by late-stage ancient society, though we'll see later on that that's not quite the case. The last interesting part is the unique way that Moon refers to ancients, skin parasites with opinions. Now, besides being a sick burn, her following remark shows the dichotomy of Iterator opinions on their creators. Not to brag, but I, uh, have expanded upon this. Interestingly as well, this pearl seems to show Ancient's opinions on the world. They seem to see it as a dull, worthless place without the ability to reach enlightenment on its own, and thus needing their helping hand to do so. Next up is the Gold Pearl found in Chimney Canopy. This information is illegal. Someone probably tried to send it by a pearl somehow rather than risking being overheard on broadcast. I think the risk of you acting on this is very slim, so I'll go ahead and explain it to you. It's an instruction on how to circumvent the self-destruction taboo. The problem with breaking taboos is that the barriers are encoded into every cell of our organic parts, and there are other taboos strictly regulating our ability to rewrite our own genome. So what you need is to somehow create a small sample of living organic matter, which can procreate and act on the rest of your organic matter to rewrite its own genome. The rewrite has to be very specific, overriding the specific taboo that you want to circumvent, but doing nothing else. The method described here is about scrambling the genome of standard plastic neural tissue with temperature fluctuations. After each scramble, you browse the resulting cells for the genome you're after. This is of course extremely time consuming, unless you run a big number of parallel processes. I definitely don't have any experience with this, but to me it would seem that too many parallel processes would be quite dangerous, and would be exponentially more difficult to manage and control them all. The whole operation seems rather risky if you ask me. It might be a good thing that this pearl never reached its destination. Uh, so yeah, this pearl is contraband. It's a hypothesis, or maybe even a solution, on how to bypass the self-destruction taboo. Seems like a taboo is more of a word for law in this universe, as they're described in much the same way. You cannot break the law, the taboo, or else there is expected repercussions. This particular pearl and taboo circumvention measure appears to be exactly the one used by Five Pebbles which created the rot and nuked moon from orbit. Though it seems as though this pearl never did reach Five Pebbles. So it might be the case that another pearl was sent later down the line, or maybe this isn't the procedure used by Five Pebbles and the rot procedure is instead something else entirely. Either way, it's neat. Oh boy, now we get into the Sky Islands pearls. Let's start with the one aptly named Sky Islands 1. All of them are dark blue or green. This one is an old conversation between Five Pebbles and a friend of his. I'll read it to you. 1591.290, Private. Five Pebbles, Seven Red Suns. Five Pebbles. Can I tell you something? Lately, I'm tired of trying and trying, and angry that they left us here. The anger makes me even less inclined to solve their puzzle for them. Why do we do this? Seven Red Suns. Yes, I'll spell this out. Not because you're stupid or naive. Also not saying that you're not. Please, I'm coming to you for guidance. Sorry, very sorry. I kid. Fact is, of course, that we are all aware of the evident futility of this big task. It's not said out loud, but if you were better at reading between the lines, there's nowhere you wouldn't see it. We're all frustrated. So why do we continue? We assemble work groups, we ponder, we iterate and try. Some of us die. It's not fair. Because there's not any options. What else can we do? You're stuck in your can, and, and at any moment, you have no more than two alternatives. Do nothing, or work like you're supposed to. An analogy. You, you have a maze and a handful of bugs. You put the bugs in the maze, and you leave. Given infinite time, one of the bugs will find the way out of the maze, if they just erratically try and try. This is why they call us iterators. But we do die of old age. Even more incentive, you know that nothing ever truly dies, though. Around and around it goes. Granted, our tools and resources get worse over time, but that is theoretically unproblematic, because in time, even a minuscule chance will strike a positive, 
all the same to them. They're not even around anymore. I struggle to accept being a bug. Wee woo wee woo, there it is again, the absolutely fucking monumental pearl alarm. This is one of those pearls that's used by those dirty, dirty pebbles and sun shippers as fuel for their fix, but it also has a shitload of lore. Primarily, all of the nature of the big task and the purpose of iterators as a species is explained here. It also shows that the idea of doubting the solvability of the great problem is not a looked down upon prospect. At least not by suns, or pebbles. All of the Sky Islands pearls are super interesting for the iterator psychology related reasons, we all love to write shit about, or is that just me? Skylands Pearl 2 next. Oh, this one is all plain text. It's an excerpt from an Iterator conversation group. 1650.787. Closed group, Sliver of Ocean. Sliver of Ocean group, all participants anonymous. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily disagree. Sliver of Straw was a traitor to the cause. Sliver of Straw broke the self-destruction taboo. How did this idiot get in there? Kick him out. NGI forcefully removed from the group. I think they had a point. <laughs> really? Elaborate. It was definitely coming from an idiotic state of mind, but there is something to it. Why is it that even in a closed sliverist group, the self-destruction taboo is held so high, while Sliver of Straw herself evidently is not among us anymore? Wait now. I'm just saying that for all the research we're doing, the theories that we have, it's strange that we leave this path untrod. It is not a new idea, but we need, it needs to be vented occasionally. What if there is no universal solution? What if perception is in fact existence. And when Sliver of Straw sent the triple positive, it was not a mistake. What if crossing oneself out, or even just death, is the way? We need to consider that possibility. Oh my god, they have trolls, it's official. This is a chat from one of the Sliverist groups, which is discussing the nature of Sliver's death, and what truly constitutes a triple affirmative. The main consensus is that it's possible that death was the answer all along. Overall, it's a bit of a nothing burger in terms of actual lore, but gives us some interesting insight into the fallout of the Sliver incident. Sky Islands 3 next. We've got a, quite a lot of these more. It's an old conversation log. I seem to be in it, but I can't recall much. Let me read it to you. 1650.800. Private. Five pebbles chasing wind, big cis moon, no significant harassment. This is in confidence, but apparently... A pseudonym, Erratic Pulse, has appeared on nearby Sliverist conversation with ideas about personal ascension. Someone here in our vicinity is trying to cross themselves out. Where did you hear this? I wish them super good luck in that endeavor. But how is this going to happen? Have the overseers gnaw through bedrock until their entire can crashes down to the Void Sea? Please be respectful when speaking of the Void Sea. Grey Wind, where did you hear this? I really shouldn't say. He's going to attempt some sort of breeding program. Thought you might want to know. Ha! <laughs> With the slimers, lizards, and etc. Certainly the answer was in a lizard skull all along. Well, he's not looking for the same thing as we anymore. He's changed his task, so who knows, really. I will try and talk to him. Please don't spread this around. Moon will go get them! Long live the Inquisition! This pearl is essentially just five pebbles trying to avoid being among us ejected. If you aren't aware, Erratic Pulse is Five Pebbles' pseudonym that he uses in Sliverist groups when looking for a way to knock himself off the census. This is his local group trying to find the imposter among them, not much else. It is quite a nice insight into Iterator communication, again, like all the Sky Islands lore pearls are. Next up, Sky Islands 4. It's me writing to the local Iterator group. I have no memories of this. 1654.110. Public. Big Sis Moon to local group. Two cycles ago, my neighbor Five Pebbles drastically increased his water consumption to four times the normal amount. He has been unresponsive for a period of time longer than that. The two of us share groundwater, and I have been without water for almost a cycle. Any attempts at communication have been met with complete silence, and my situation is becoming increasingly dangerous. I asked the local group for information about when you were last able to contact him, and to try to use those same communication channels again, repeatedly, until you get a response. I will be clear on this. If he is not persuaded to stop whatever he is doing, I will die. Before that happens, I will utilize my seniority privilege and use forced communications, hoping to shake him out of it. Forced communications in the network will be unpleasant for all, and I will wait as long as possible before I turn to that option. And now here I am. Up to my waist in water, getting drowned on the regular. Wow, look, another completely self-explanatory pearl. This is Moon sending a public message to her group, detailing her plans to talk to Five Pebbles about his water-guzzling problem. Not much else to discuss besides, uh, 
I guess I could detail seniority privilege? Seniority privilege is a privilege held by older iterators over newer ones that allows them to overwrite certain procedures and send things like messages despite communication filters. Presumably. That's more just something I intuited instead of concrete lore. But concrete lore doesn't really exist in Rain World, so I guess this explanation works. Next up in the final Sky Islands Pearl, Sky Islands 5. I remember this. It isn't pleasant reading, but if you must hear it, this is what it says. 1654.116. Private. Forced. Big Sis Moon, 5 Pebbles. Immediately lower your groundwater consumption to one-fifth of the current intake. Stop whatever it is you are doing. Please stop. As your local group senior, I order you... you, you, you. As your senior, I, I plead... Stop. You could not have chosen a worse moment to disturb me. You have ruined everything. P please. I almost had it. I will never forget this. This pearl is another relatively self-explanatory one. This is Moon in a dehydrated fever, using her seniority privilege to yell at Five Pebbles to stop what he's doing. Of course, by the time he's responded to this, he's already accidentally let out robot aids into his system, creating unfortunate development. Probably. It is highly likely that this forced communication is what interrupted his experiments and let loose the rot on his systems. If so, that's a particularly interesting narrative development, but uh, I'll leave the literary analysis of the story of Rain World to my Twitch streams for now. Next up, the Pink Pearl and Farmer is. This one is just plain text. I will read it to you. On regards of the by spiritual splendor eternally graced people of the Congregation of Never Dwindling Righteousness, we wish to congratulate, oh so thankfully, this facility on its loyal and relished services, and to offer our hopes and aspirations that the fruitfully and mutually satisfactory cooperation may continue for as long as the stars stay fixed on their celestial spheres, and or the cooperation continues to be fruitful and mutually satisfactory. It is with honor I, eight sons, countless leaves, of the house of six wagons, count of no living blocks, co counselor of two, duke of one, humble secretary of the congregation of never dwindling righteousness, write this to you. We hope that the crops are healthy and that the productivity with which your facility is blessed leads, as it often does, to further prosperity. May not as long as the stars stay fixed on their celestial spears, gray hand, impure blood, inheritable corruption, parasites or malfunctions settle in your establishment. Leaning on the solid foundation of our long-running, fruitful, and mutually satisfactory cooperation, we will take the liberty of stating the reason for this message. We write to warmly thank you for yet another timely and appreciated delivery of your product, Nectar, to our community, Congregation of Never Dwindling Righteousness. Our humble words can never aspire to our gratitude, sincerely, and the name and titles again. It is a confirmation to an automated farming plot that a shipment of beverages has arrived. Well, that pearl was a pain in the ass to read. I don't think you understand how many takes it took to get it even that well. Either way, this pearl is evidence of the primary aspect of the ancients that permeates every sentence spoken about them and by them, their insane pretentiousness. Every single ancient had a stick up its ass so deep it was spitting up splinters. This business letter is evidence of that. Over half the letter is just names. Also, it talks about nectar again. Right, lore. I mentioned earlier that nectar is not an invention of ancient society in the traditional superfood sense, but actual, real, harvestable nectar. Presumably, from the giant farmeraise plants that we see all over the place. This pearl was found in farmeraise, is presumably talking about farmeraise, and these boys learned they can hold quite a lot of sugar juice. Next up, the second farmeraise pearl, the red one. It's a small plate, a little text of spiritual guidance. It's written by a monk called Four Cabinets, Eleven Hatchets. It's old, several ages before the Void Fluid Revolution. Like most writing from this time, it's quite shrouded in analogies, but the subject is how to shed one of the five natural urges which tie a creature to life. Namely, number four, gluttony. It is basically an instruction on how to starve yourself on herbal tea and gravel, but disguised as a poem. Now, of course, when void fluid was discovered, these methods proved obsolete, as it was more easy just jumping in a vat of it to effortlessly leave this world behind. There were some horror stories, though, that if your ego is big enough, not even the void fluid could entirely cross you out, and a faint echo of your pompousness would grandiosely haunt the premises forever. So even when the void fluid baths became cheaper, some would still starve and drink the bitter tea. This pearl tells us of the early methods of ascension as tempted by the ancients, where they attempted to cut out all forms of earthly pleasure and attachment by embracing a sort of super monkhood where they starved themselves and only subsisted off of herbal tea and gravel, which I don't know what they mean. Uh, I personally find gravel delicious. This also tells us about how the karma symbols relate to the five natural urges. I have a whole video on what this pearl tells us, linked here in the top right. Watch that one, it's a good one. Next up, green pearl and drainage systems. It's an old text, the verses are familiar to me, but I don't remember by whom they were written. The language is very old and intricate. 
The first verse starts by drawing a comparison between the world and a tangled rug. It says that the world is an unfortunate mess, like a knot. The nature of its existence is the fact that the parts are locking each other, uh, none able to spring free. Then, as it goes on, the world becomes a furry animal hide, I suppose because now us living beings are like insects crawling in the fur. And then it's a fishing net, because the more we struggle and squirm, the more entangled we become. It says that only the limp body of the jellyfish cannot be captured in the net, so we must try to be like the jellyfish, because the jellyfish doesn't try. This was an eternal dilemma to them. They were burdened by great ambition, yet deeply convinced that striving in itself was an unforgivable vice. They tried very hard to be effortless, perhaps that what we were to them, someone to delegate that unrestrained effort to. I know I have tried very hard. This is probably my favorite pearl in the game, because it also rings that alarm. Where is it, by the way? Wee -woo, wee -woo. Oh, oh, there it is. This pearl almost single-handedly explains the viewpoints, ambitions, and societal rules of the ancients. It doesn't really mince words either. It just tells you flat out this is how they saw it. Video Cult is essentially just laying down a fat steaming wad of lore in your lap, and it's great! I don't have to dig through the Robo-Losers Discord calls to intuit the slightest bit about how the ancient skateboarding culture died miserably after only a few cycles of popularity. Anyways, yeah, this pearl is uh, self-explanatory and good. Thanks for the simplicity. Next up is the Dark Fuchsia Pearl from Subterranean. It's a conversation log. All plain text. You want me to read it? 1681... Dot six six two, private. Seven red suns chasing wind. Have you had any contact with five pebbles recently? Not in a long while, actually, unless worrying about him counts. One of his neighbors, unparalleled innocence, sent an overseer to his can and he got some images. They were made public in the local group. It's an effort to be mean, I suppose. Uh, there's no other way of putting it. He looks awful. Tell me. He's got the rot very badly. Big cysts have become mobile and are scattering down the west and middle legs. He does listen to you, and a few others by now. You should talk to him. I will try to contact him. Does Moon know? Moon has been unavailable for some time. This is a neat little conversation. It only really tells us one thing, which is that the rot is a common thing among iterators, or uh, at least is well known enough that it's happened before and has a name. I guess the goop evolves in the same cancerous rot cells, no matter the stuff that made it up. It does also tell us that, uh, comparatively to other Rider Raiders, Five Pebble State is incredibly bad. Guess they haven't seen Moon yet, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, they haven't. They just said it. Dipshit. Next up, Teal Pearl Infiltration Systems. We're so close. It's the blueprint for a Void Fluid Infiltration System. Do you know what Void Fluid is? I think you don't. If you leave a stone on the ground and come back sometime later, it's covered in dust. This happens everywhere. And over several lifetimes of creatures such as you, the ground slowly builds upwards. So why doesn't the ground collide with the sky? Because far down under the very, very old layers of the earth, the rock is being dissolved or removed. The entity which does this is known as the Void Sea. If you drill far enough into the earth, you begin encountering a substance called Void Fluid. The deeper you go, the less rock and more Void Fluid. It's believed that there is a point where the rock completely gives way. That would be the Void Sea. When that stone you placed on the ground has finally done its time in the sediments, it meets the Void Fluid and it is dissolved, leaving the physical world. My creators, or rather, my creator's ancestors figured out a way to use void fluid, because you can generate energy using a vacuum and... Never mind. Anyways, the void fluid drills were what started the big technological leap, but this is very long before I entered the world, so I can only tell you what I remember from priming. A void fluid filtration system is used because if you take void fluid from close to the bedrock horizon, it will contain traces of rock and dirt. They bring in dirty fluid and then filter it out to increase its purity. The other way is to put a pipe deeper, which works well for some time, but the pipe dissolves or is broken by some force no, no one really knows. You don't go down there and come back up. I hope that satisfied your curiosity, little creature. Wee -woo, wee -woo. Oh, there it goes again. This pearl is fucking weird, like really fucking weird. Its language tells us a bunch of different things, like dust and cycles and rock and sky and void and all that nonsense. I'll intuit this the best as I can. Void fluid is a type of acidic substance that forms a sort of bedrock and is constantly eating away at the world as it gets covered by dust, I guess. Which, if you didn't know, uh, is not how it works in real life. Moon cucks us by not telling us what the fucking vacuum does. My god, please tell us what the vacuum does. And then, uh, just, and then she tells us about the uh, drills and the revolution and how much earlier that was on the Iterator Project start. It then tells us that the filtration systems was designed to filter out all the dust and shit that makes its way into our fine turbo acid. That was pretty quick, let's move on. Oh my god, we're here. The final colored pearl. The aquamarine pearl. Held by the hunter at the start of his run. 
Triple affirmative! Triple affirmative! In all seriousness, though, noticed barely any rain coming from your can, so figured a little support might be in order. Wasn't that easy to see, of course, with Pebbles, shall we say, healthy output. Well, enjoy the slag keys. Excuse the unorthodox delivery method. Equipment eroding, etc., etc. Be well. NSH. Oh. I see now. Again. Thank you, little friend. This pearl is also self-explanatory. It's a fun little note written by No Significant Harassment for their good friend looks to the moon. Wahoo. Whoa, that was exhausting. Uh, we're not done yet, though. We still got a shitload of lines for what happens if you give Moon a non-lore pearl. So, I'm gonna blaze through these, reading each one, but only really commenting on those that matter. Here we go. Ahem. <clears throat> this is a movement acceptance invoice from one of the dual cellular living blocks, as requested by eight bogs of the House of Eight during the Tan Hegemonic Architectural Dynasty. All very standard stuff, I can't imagine you'd be interested. This is an official decree of cultivation sent from the 22nd Subsidence Council ordering the Eastern Spoke Farmery Administration to immediately harvest and process all viable crops, despite whatever misgivings they might have. A short-sighted endeavor for sure. I would assume this was sent sometime during the final cycles leading up to the final public ascension, when interest on biosphere sustainability was at an all-time low. This one is quite neat. Apparently the final public ascension was a sudden thing. Not teetering out at all. Guess I've missed this. Surprisingly important pearl. We of the 592nd High Convocation of the True Anointed Citadel do hereby demand, with full force of law and religious doctrine, an immediate end to construction of the apostate superstructure abomination to place shadow upon the divine body of the True Anointed Citadel is outrageous blasphemy and cannot be tolerated, no matter the circumstances. Clearly this was ignored. This pearl explains why Shaded Citadel is shaded, and how important it was beforehand. Neat. I see a vague memory of a family portrait, painted in high classical manner that was famous during the Yellow Hegemonic Literary Dynasty. The portrait is likely a fake, as the style was quite fashionable for aspirational lower caste aristocrats to impress each other with. This one does not impress, I assure you. It's a catalogue of bolts and screws for Sky's Sail Journey. We Ida Readers were built for pragmatism, so it is an understatement to say we were not known for our appreciation of beauty. But sky sails in flight during the big festivals always filled my soul with emotion. HA! Proof that iterators were designed for math and numbers and shit, but had feelings and needed therapy. My writing is good, I promise. A small portion is still legible, and thus we conclude that gold and water shall some sort of metaphysical or alchemical treaties, perhaps. This one I don't know. It could be an old text, but some parts don't add up. Might be a reimagination of a classic text that I'm not familiar with. This is a blueprint for a support beam used for the early construction of industrial areas. You can see these in use not too far from here. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! This fucking thing, this fucking thing proves it. It proves it. This, it, the fucking, the single eye mouth, it, they could be support beams. They could be support beams. Oh, I'm so mad I didn't catch it. This is off the cuff. I'm reading this. I'm reading out the script. I didn't catch this. I'm so angry. Here we have a schematic for a refuse reclamation automaton. It's an early design, but the long tubular body and single eye mouth are quite similar to the later models. This pearl has haunted me for ages. It is so important. Why is it so important? A schematic for a bunch of gas pipes. I don't know the purpose for this machine, but it doesn't look particularly well crafted. This is the genome of a sulfur processing microbe. In my opinion, these were used far too late to have any effect. It's a blueprint for a small incense purification filter. Life on the superstructure, arcologies. It's a design for a machine that makes bolts. A model of a pipe section. Unfortunately, I can't read this as it isn't a memory construct pearl. It's just a simple diamond sphere, as worthless as the carbon it's printed from. Memory construct pearls are what they're called. Neat, I guess. This one has a small crack and has been pretty badly corrupted. There's a slight impression of a shape of a wing on it, but I can't get a clear image. I'm sorry, this pearl is damaged and cannot be read. I suggest you use it for trade with the scavengers, as they won't know the difference. This one seems to have an image on it, but the pearl has been exposed to sunlight and it's very faded. I see a tall structure with banners unfurled. There might be something on here, but the pearl has been lying in the sun and it's all very pale. So, I'm too tired to look any deeper. I apologize. I can't make anything out of this pearl, it's just too faded. But there might have been something on it once. 
I'm sorry, all that worked for nothing. This pearl is completely blank. Can't make out anything legible on this one. Sorry. There's nothing on this one, unfortunately. I'm sorry, this one has nothing on it. This one has nothing on it. This one is all blank. Sorry. There's nothing on this one. Wow, that was a really nice string of things for me to say. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Oh, this contains an image of another pearl just like it. Let me look. Yes, as I thought, the image also contains an image of a pearl in it, and so on. Some comedian playing recursion games, I would guess. Through the mists of memory, your image dances like the motes of dust in a ray of sunlight that pierces a dark room. A line of verse from an ancient farmer poet, Pell. Very dreary, if you ask me. Fifteen stems of sunbark hydrolyzed, twelve to nineteen bushels of atomized chalk powder, assorted root vegetation. It goes on and on, a shopping list or perhaps a recipe. It's a recipe of some kind? Two parts rot bar extract, one part bone ash. Nothing I recognize, an image of five bottles standing on a surface made of plants? I have no idea what this is. It's an image of a hand-drawn document. The calligraphy is quite beautiful, but the text itself is a very dull classical poem. A list of someone's lucky numbers. There are no less than 71 of them. No, I don't want to talk about the contents of this pearl. It's porn, it's porn, it's fucking porn. The anxious made more porn, God damn it! It's a song, or hymn rather, very repetitive. Dear Diary, and that's it. Oh, interesting, this is a diary entry of a pre iterator era laborer during the construction of the subterranean transit system south of here. In it, they describe restless nights filled with disturbing dreams where millions of glowing stars move menacingly in the distance. Okay, that's fucking menacing. I can't imagine how that'll pay off. Uh, a hint, uh, it, it, it won't, I don't think. I doubt that they'll do anything of this magnitude. There isn't much to the data here. It's just basic theory for karmic transform of n-dimensional geometries, but the pearl itself is quite interesting. You can see the crude holes burned through the center that the scavengers used to tie these pearls onto their totems or to carry. I honestly can't fathom how they achieved this with their primitive level of technology. Fascinating. How the fuck did the scavengers burn a hole through pearls? What the hell? It has been written to, but then scrambled and then scrambled again. Suspicious behavior, to be sure. This one has been purposefully scrambled. It's completely illegible. Business documents, perhaps. This is the growing instruction for the skeleton of a creature, but I don't recognize the creature. It was small, about your size. It just has the number 8 written on it. The rest is empty. This one seems to be a number series. Perhaps a key? A number series. I would guess some kind of cipher. It's just uh, the numbers 14, 13, 5 repeated over and over. I have no idea what the purpose for this one would be. This one is filled with active working memory. Without knowing the surrounding processes, this information is meaningless. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think that we were done after we were done with the white pearls? Fucking cope. We still got the five pebbles pearls. You know, the ones that he's got in his chamber? Yeah, it can take us all the way to moon and there's individual dialogue. Yeah, let's keep on going. It's an active working memory. Raw data has been dropped here in order to later be pasted into a currently occupied memory conflux. Without context, it's just a jumble. It's the impression of being a small creature, like a wall-climbing lizard and looking up into the branches of a big tree. The last third is partly overwritten with a number series I vaguely recognize, but without my memory. A common prayer mantra repeated 7,110 times. Each repetition has some slight random variations, which seem to have been written later. It's the image of a single gray cloud hovering above a surface of white clouds under a deep blue sky. Two intertwined number series? I don't quite understand the utility of this. Might a key for a cipher processor customized for some other data, which is impossible to infer from this. It's qualia, or a moment, a very short one. Someone is holding a black stone and twisting it slightly as they drag their fingers across the rough surface. The entire sequence is shorter than a heartbeat, but the resolution is extraordinary. An active working memory. Without knowing where this was cut from or where it's to be pasted to, it's not really possible to decipher it. If I had to guess, I'd say it's something to do with trans-inducing number series. It's just an active working memory. I can't really tell you anything without the context. Without the process surrounding this data, there isn't much I can tell you. It might have something to do with the void fluid simulation. This one is completely blank. Actually, blanker than blank. It must have been deliberately overwritten with repeating negative versions of itself for thousands of iterations. A memory, but not really visual or even concrete in its character. 
It reminds me of the feeling of a warm wind, but not the physical feeling. The inner feeling. I don't think it has much utility unless you're doing some very fringe regeneratist research. In total, all these five pebbles pearls don't really tell us much. They give us some insight, however small, into the inner workings of an iterator, so at least there's that. And there we go. Finally out of the woods with all these goddamn colored spheres. I'm gonna take a nap. This script has fucking tired me out. There's too much fucking lore. But before I do that, we got a few more announcements. First off, this is probably my last video before Downpour comes out. Speaking of Downpour, I got an early code, which means I'm going to be streaming early morning on the 16th of January, right here on YouTube and also on my Twitch channel as usual. Be there or be square. Anyway, if you want to follow up on this for the downpour pearls, which inevitably there's going to be like 57 of them, uh, tell me in the comments. See you all later. Thank you for watching. Uh, click the validation buttons and give me money on Patreon. Goodbye.